to our November 8, 2021 Lexington Remembers interview. Lexington Remembers was began in 2005 by Mary Gillespie, Dan Fenn, and Jacqueline Ward, and has conducted over 50 interviews with Lexingtonians to capture their memories of Lexington. These interviews have been posted on YouTube, so you can catch those at that location. I'm Donna Hooper, and with me is Peter Kelly, a fellow Lexington Remembers uh, member. Today, we have the pleasure of welcoming Molly and Joe Nye, we hope to capture some of their memories during their longtime residency of Lexington. So Molly and Joe, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Can you give us a sense of what brought you to Lexington and to the Boston area in 1965 and specifically 1932 Mass Ave? <laughs> well, we had returned from Africa to Cambridge and had two babies and wanted more grass and trees. And so that's why we moved out to Lexington. And when we drove through the town, we, we thought, do houses ever come up on the battle green? And we thought it was such a silly question, we didn't dare ask. And the next day, our realtor called, and we saw our house on the battle green, and we moved. We bought it right away. I, I, obviously, Molly got the story right, but you can simplify it by saying, it was driven by uh, having our second son. We couldn't afford to live in Cambridge anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we needed grass and trees. So, so 1932 Mass Ave is just to the right of the Hancock Church on the battle green. And for those that don't facing, know facing all the, the numbers church. on Mass Ave, facing the battle green, right. So in 1965, we were a much smaller community. We had uh, just under... 28,000 people. We had six precincts, and we had still, we were operating under our uh, executive secretary, former government, not the, 68, I think, was when the Selectman Town Manager Act was adopted, and we had much stronger uh, town manager, former government. And um, we were a bedroom community. We had two brand new schools, elementary schools, and we had still a good deal of open space, and the highways had been developed, so people were coming out from Boston or easy to get back and forth to Boston. And uh, the railroad was still running That's at that sweet. time. Um, we did have some zoning changes at that time, too, so the development was happening. Um, so what's your recollection in that area? Well, Captain Parker Arms was being built and, and was an enormous addition at that time, I think. Um, the train ran once a day in each direction, so you could come out and go back. Um, and your boys went to Our boys Hancock went School? to Hancock, Hancock School. Right. Walked climbing, over the hill? Climbing over the hill. Right. Yeah. Um, so all the old schools were still open. Yeah. We hadn't yes. closed right. any schools. School we were still developing and so it was, new schools. That was really wonderful. But I, I would just add to that that it, um, the green was then surrounded by huge elm trees, gorgeous big Good elm point. trees, and they all died in the Dutch elm disease in the years that came. We even had two or three gorgeous right. elms. Right. I mean, really big trees in our backyard, which had to be taken down. So if you look at what happened physically, uh, we lost those elms, which gave a tremendous uh, special character to the green. But also, uh, what I remember is I used to love to go to Lexington Lumber. And I'd walk up uh, you know, across the green, walk up to Lexington Lumber if I wanted to get some nails or boards or something. It was right there. Where the, where the Liberties is. Right? Where the Liberties is now, but it was a, terrific place, you know, an old-fashioned lumber company with a siding from the rail that came in and right brought things. And uh, so that was, it, 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 there was still a, it, a bit of more of the small town uh, sense of, of Lexington then. And, and then, of course, in the, in the center, before the fire uh, burned down the building where Molly eventually had her gallery. Center you know, block. Yeah, you know, right. the center block. Corner of Merriam Street and Massachusetts yeah. Avenue. So they're, 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 they're just the visual nature of the At town changed. At the time changed. when you folks came, we had three supermarkets, right? We had the First National, 
We had an A&P &P still, yep. right? and the Stop and Shop, which had just opened in 90, yeah. uh, 1966, because I worked right, there when they right opened. All together. I mean, they, they were, were all there. together. I know. That was, was the theory. Was it's wild. like having a McDonald's and a Wendy's and a Burger yeah. King, you know? Exactly. They were all there but competing with one another. Yeah, we used to use the A&P, and then it became basically a, what is it, a Chevrolet? Yeah, Chev Chevrolet. Chevrolet. Oh, Chevrolet. 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 Right. Right. So we that would have been fair them. enough. So you both are from New Jersey, and you came here because of the schools, uh, your, your relationship with the uh, university, Harvard College? Yeah, I, actually, the, we came to the Boston area because I came as a graduate student in Harvard and uh, to do my PhD. And uh, then I did the PhD work in East Africa, and then we came back to Cambridge uh, while I was writing up and so forth in the first year of teaching at Harvard. And then, um, as I said, the, the second child made the difference. Yeah. It tends to make a difference. Yeah. Not so much third children, but they yeah. make a difference too. <laughs> well, our exactly. third child who graduated from LHS loved Lexington, but it's true, he was not the cause of our living. <laughs> no, I guess the benefit of it, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> So was there really was there a real neighborhood sense around the green? Or oh no, you know, what no, was no, like? there was not. No, everybody was old. Whoa, at, old. At the, at the beginning. We moved in, and we you know neighborhoods change by um, yeah. in generations. generations, and we were the first young people to move into that area. Everyone else was old, and I thought, well, where are the where are the children and then I pushed my babies down Forest Street, and all sorts of young mothers came out to say, oh, who's this, who's this new woman? Where are these children coming from? And that was my <laughs> salvation. And, and, uh, yeah, but there. then it became a community. Very, and then, yeah. uh, yes, and then it, it started turning over. Marge Weirds moved into um, the other side the, of Hancock. The Tenney House, yeah. the Tenney House, and Carla Fortman moved into the Foley House and Dr. Foley moved on and um, the parish, the, um, parsonage, uh, the parsonage was where Joanne Schwentner lives today. Um, for the first parish. For first par right. parsonage for first parish. Right. Right. And, and was it Floyd Taylor was living there? Floyd in Taylor yeah. was living there and then he moved on. But you should tell your story about meeting Floyd Taylor. Well, he was the minister of First oh, Parish. Church. Yeah, church. Church. And he'd been there for years. And um, I figured, well, we were surrounded by churches. We had Hancock next door. We had a, a Redeemer across the green. We had the Greeks. We had the, uh, the, the Catholics. The Catholic not too church. Far away. Right? So I thought, well, we should be giving our children a religious education. So we would try all of them. And then one day, our doorbell rang out of the blue, and it, there was Floyd Taylor, minister of First Parish. And he came in just to talk. I had to sit down with him with a vacuum cleaner between us, and babies crawling around. But it made me sit down and have a grown-up conversation that was just wonderful. And he said, I think we're related, Mrs. Nye. My wife is a Nye. So we never tried the other two. <laughs> we, we just went to first parish. And it we was, have loved being Yeah, first. it was great because it had a nursery school in the basement. That, and you didn't you serve on that nursery yeah, school yeah, board? Right. Yeah. I did. Yeah. So we, we it was when it came time for the kids to go to preschool, they just walked across Mass Avenue and there they were. Oh, yeah. That was nice. And then you had the parsonage for um the um, Reverend Hanley living down the street, oh, and, he, and Dr. He, Harrington was still Dr. In Harrington, business in her right. house. And Nancy Ford, Dr. Harrington's daughter, did live on the green and next door to him. She had four children. That 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 was nice. Um, and then then he moved on. Dr. Harrington moved on. So. Was the Harring, uh, the house at the corner still there? Yes, and they, the, the Carrie girl, the Carrie women lived there. Oh, was the Carrie women? It was a Carrie, okay. 
Yeah. And the town, uh, it was will to the town, I think, and the town decided to tear it down rather than and use it as an entry to the battle green. That's exactly right. And it was a great right. Victorian Big with a turret, do you remember? Yeah, and it right. had fancy down. shingling, yeah. patterning, and things on it. Um, and I think a lot of what had been in that house ended up in the Cataldo's house on the corner of Forest and... Oh, where he moved into it. Where he yeah. did over that house. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. Interesting. So you... You were here when one of the significant additions, renovations, if you will, of the Cary Library took place. Is that right? Wasn't there one in the oh, late yeah. 60s, early 70s? Yeah. Before the most recent one. Yeah. The, but big it one was, was the big one was the one that you all worked on. Oh, yeah, but prior to that, the, for example, the entry that has presently been restored and put back on it was taken off. But perhaps that was the late 50s, I'm thinking of. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember the entry being they changed. Yeah. It. it was a big vestibule. Right, yeah. yeah. Okay, so but that was pre-9. Yeah, I think that must have been pre-9. <laughs> pre-9. Pre so you, did, you folks did live in quite a volatile time. If you th Lexington always has volatile times, it seems. But uh, from the mid to later 60s, as we turned into the 70s, and your children were getting older and wiser as they do when they become teenagers and all. A lot of things were happening. We speak to um, the Hancock Church and was it Wee Place they established <laughs> there yeah, in the late 60s or 70s? Yeah. And certainly we want to touch on the uh, Vietnam Veterans Against the War. Um, that was a big big thing. whack that right. took place in 1971. Well, well, you should talk we about the attic. To, and the, uh, we were about to leave. We were temporarily, packing up. Yeah. We were going off on sabbatical to Europe, and um, we had placed five rabbits and three chickens in, you know, some other house, or, you know, and rented our house. And Connie Devereaux came into our backyard to look at our backyard in relationship to Hancock Church because, as she said, as we're leaving town, um, we're about to open a coffee house called The Attic. Was the Attic. Um, and it was to serve teenagers on Friday nights, I think. Um, and we thought, oh, goodness, I wonder what's happening. Well, we were gone for a year, and we got messages about the, the tenant said, have you rented your tree house? Because there's, there's, there's some people <laughs> the tree house is living a rough in your tree structure house. that I built in the backyard. <laughs> yeah. And they had, they had kids, you know, living in our tree house for a while. And they, they would come and play with their toys. And so then we ended up putting up a fence. And there had been, you know, there, had, there was a rule that, that there were to be no fences between any of the uh, properties on the, on the battle green. It was to be forever open, but they hadn't anticipated having something like this. Molly, that speaks to that 100-year covenant that took that's place from 1915 through 2015, 15. when it spoke about not having fences and it, everyone making a united commitment to keep those homes around the Battle keep Green intact. Right. It would have been nicer not to have a fence, uh, but but you needed the protection. We have well, to it, have it, you know, our kids would walk over the Belfry Terrace to go to Hancock right. School. And as they'd be coming back, the, the teenagers who were then experimenting with drugs would offer drugs to our kids. And uh, we said, no, this is something wrong with this. Okay. And then, as Molly said, they would camp out in our treehouse and so forth. So to give credit to Hancock Church, they, they built, built the fence. They, they yeah. built, and it's an eight-foot fence, which is something yeah. mm. and we've been maintaining it so but it's, i mean it, but it would have been nicer if everything had remained open right. but yeah uh, the people ahead of us time. the people who lived in our house before us i kept i i would say to my friends can you believe the people who lived here were here for 49 years 
And I thought that was forever. And now we've been in the house for 56 years. So that's pretty amazing. But they had, they were members of Hancock Church, the Glidens and the mm -hmm. Boyers. And um, they had steps that went from our backyard up to the church um, because their daughter was married there. And so I thought it, was, it made it easy for people to come from the church to the wedding reception in the backyard. So. Um, that was sort of interesting. Uh, the, speaking of the body, the steps that go from the parking lot of the Hancock Church down to Belfry Terrace, or was there a set that No, there's another no, set. These another were just set two, in, they were just two or three. Was, they were like railroad ties that oh, they built. Oh, okay, to bring so, them to the so, backyard. So, so you could go could and come. walk so in So the reception, uh, the Glidden wedding reception was in, in the backyard. backyard. Yeah. 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 Boyer wedding. I think Boyer. it was a Boyer. Okay. Well, that, I don't know. Boyer. Maybe it was maybe it was Marsha Boyer getting married as as the daughter of Glidden. I mean, oh. she the Glidden's raised Marsha Boyer. Marsha Boyer married a psychiatrist Boyer, mm -hmm. and stayed in the house. And he practiced okay. his psychiatry so. in the house. But I. But let's not leave the issue right. of Hancock Church without saying the church acted very responsibly. I mean when we complained about this, as we should complain, uh, they really met us more than halfway. Bert so Stewart. So, I'm, so let's not leave a... I mean, Hancock was trying, the church was trying to do something to respond to troubled teenagers who were going through a rebellious period in the late 60s. Um, and uh, there were some unexpected side effects, such as as this offering drugs to little children, but the church responded very well to it. And they reined it in over time. Yes, they yeah. did. Yeah. Well, well they had Galen Smith, who was really terrific. Yeah. No, I, we have we have no complaints about the church people. So you were um, both involved in the community over the in many mm -hmm. ways over the past fifty six years. <laughs> still <laughs> are. Yeah, yeah, still are. One so, and can you just offer some highlights on? Um, what interests you and um, what the experiences were like? Well, um, I was on the, are you talking about boards and things yeah. like that? Well, the Historical Society Board and Historic Districts, I was on that for, for a while. And what were found, those years? found those bit? fascinating under Wilbur Jaycliffe. Okay, so that would have been the 70s or early 80s? It, it was early on. Um, yeah, it might okay. have been and in the 70s. And you sat on the Historic District Commission yep. for a couple of terms? Yep. Um, Roly Greeley was on it. Oh, okay. He always folded the maps. <laughs> And um, well, you live right next door to the Greeley House. I know, house. right there, where he grew up and where he died. Was he there right. when you, as your neighbor? Oh yeah. He, yeah. No, he yeah. didn't. No, well, he, he moved away. He moved up to. Well, yeah. yeah. But he moved to um, down the road on Massachusetts Avenue. He was where on Massachusetts. Polly lived. Right. But then he moved into the Dana home. Right. And then he came home to die in his own his house, in, home. in the house where he'd grown okay. up. Okay. And. Um, his twin sisters were living there, and until and not too, too long ago, really. Mm, I know. So you were involved in town committees. So I did the, the historical society, and I did. Oh, I was on the town. Wow, what one of one of those town traffic meetings traffic committees safety. or whatever it was. I, they it, never end. I know, yeah. and then I ran for town meeting late in life. Um, it was just did one term of that. Um, church boards, well, and then the Lexington Arts and Crafts Society was really my a very important uh, part. focus. And um, well, yes. you were president of LexArt twice, right. once in the '70s well, and right. again in the 2010s. Right. Yeah. right, your true love. Yeah, yeah, and that really was a was a, a focal about point of well, the years uh, you had in the gallery. Uh, you had yeah. uh, you started gallery on the green. Started Gallery yeah. on the Green, right? And its first it's, location was? Well, it, the first location was in the basement of what was called Books on the Green in the Giroux building. Which where, replaced the old. Where we right. paid $200 rent, which was really nice, and, and developed a gallery space in their basement. And that was really nice for two years, maybe. And then they went out of business. So we moved our gallery up into what had been Books on the Green. 
was, and um, suggested that some local artists start a cooperative called Depot Square Artists. And they started with 10 members, and they took over our finished basement space. So we had two galleries in one space. And that was with Gracia Dayton, who everybody knows, and Natalie Warshower. They were the spear. Mm -hmm. I, those who went, I called and said, how about doing this? And they jumped at it, which was really nice. And and how many years was that in, in operation, the gallery? Well, ga Gallery on the Green was in operation. Its founding to, um, to closing was probably 14 and a half years oh, wow. or something. And um, Depot Square then took over our whole space when we went out of business. We, Joe and I moved to Washington, and our partners didn't want to go it alone, so uh, we closed the gallery, and Depot Square took over the whole space. And by then, the rents were wildly expensive. I mean, it, they were, it was something like So the gallery group, which was in the basement originally, after you left the basement, they came up and took over that space. They took Still over the, the whole building, building, in the Juru yeah. building, okay. okay, which is now Sweet Time. Oh, okay. Right. And I love I love sweet, sweet time. time. I go to sweet time. And the problem is you can't eat in sweet time right now because of the yeah. COVID. But, but the the gallery on the green experience it was bracketed by two stints in Washington where I was in the Carter administration. Yeah. And when I came back from that, the kids were pretty much taking care of themselves. They were middle aged. Middle, middle, so, middle, middle, middle school. Middle school, yeah. Middle school, not middle and so Molly then said, I'll start a gallery with her partners. And then I went back to Washington in 93 um, to join the uh, Clinton. Clinton administration. And at that point, uh, that was that was hard to keep the gallery going. And so that those were the brackets. But, That's exactly right. But it, it, over the longer term, Molly's done a lot to bring art to Lexington, both mm -hmm. in both in starting to. this gallery, but also her service on LexArt before she started the gallery on, and on LexArt after the gallery. And uh, along came the Lexington Council for the Arts, yeah. and we changed that name from, instead of Lexington Council, Arts Council, we changed it to the Lexington Council for the Arts. And, that, and we were the first, first chairs of that. And now we have at, on Waltham Street, at the Lexington Arts and Crafts Society, which is now LexArt, the Molly, Molly Harding yeah. Nye yeah. Well, Gallery, yeah. well, which is quite been a, thanks to Joe, right? No, oh, it's, 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 quite, it's quite a success. It, it yeah. has regular um, shop hours. As it well. has the a full, it open. has a full, yes, an ongoing so shop. So it's yeah. putting life in that corner and adding some oh. real interest to. Uh, and will only be better once the center finishes its renovation, oh. which will be another year, unfortunately. But or three. Ooh. Don't you think it's going to take a long time? You're acting like it's a government. Yeah. <laughs> but you, you didn't mention uh, the Lexington Historical Society. You spent a lot of time on that on that yeah. board. And you're still on the board today. No, I'm oh, not. You had, no, right. I just you're get right. all the mailings. <laughs> all right. Now, Joe, you met, and Molly, you mentioned you know, you've gone back and forth to Washington, to Europe, to various locations, but this is your home. Um, Joe, can you share with us some of the, the um, opportunities and initiatives you've taken to share your um, expertise yeah. in fo foreign service and diplomacy? Well, I, 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 you know, because of my um, field being international relations, I did a lot of traveling, and we spent two stints in Washington and so forth. But um, back home, um, I try to uh, share that with people through uh, carry memorial lectures, and I, I spoke at the Lexington, uh, well, but uh, at the Lexington Library uh, a number of times, and then the Lexington Veterans uh, Group. So, you know, trying to, first to and, and I've spoken at First Parish several Many times. times right? So basically uh, transporting some of this experience internationally back home in, uh, in various venues. I think you spoke at the an anniversary of World War II, didn't you? Yes. Think? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. for the yeah. Historical yeah. Society. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, right. Right. that's yeah. right. Let's speak a minute about your memory of 
1971, Memorial Day weekend, when the veterans against the war, the Vietnam War, were marching from Concord Bridge through Lexington on the bivouac, spend the night on the Battle Green on their advancement, uh, on their way to, I think, Bunker Hill and the Boston Common. And that night on uh, the 29th, Saturday the 29th, which was a very nice day in town, and you folks were home across the street. How do you remember the, the, the events that uh, transpired that day? Yeah. Well, um, the selectmen voted to not allow camping. And they had just spent so much money repairing the green. Do you remember that? that they would put in a lot of you know, new, new Grass and turf. Grass. Yeah, they, they've done a big job. And that was the only way I could justify. I couldn't figure out why they wouldn't allow allow this overnight, yeah. uh, overnight camping. Um, but that was the only way I could figure, only justification, I guess, for it. So we saw, we saw young John Kerry and everyone arriving, and we watched it. And then in the middle of, the, it seemed like the middle of the night, it was dark. Uh, Joe and I went out, leaving our children in the house. Um, and and uh, state troopers were standing, you know, elbow to elbow all the way around the green, wearing leather. Um, what do you call them? Are they patties or pate? Whatever the, yeah. the leather leather well, well, covers leather on their boots. legs yeah, and yeah. and guns and helmets, and you could just hear the hear the. You could hear the leather, you could hear the well-oiled guns, you could hear, you know, you could hear this, hear all that, uh, as we walked around. Um, and we thought, is this really happening in our front yard? Is this really happening in our town? But there were really and, two, two stages, Molly. In the afternoon, uh, when the veterans first arrived in Lexington, uh, it, it, it was quite a, uh, it, there wasn't that sense of crisis about it. I mean, they because uh, I remember we took our children. I met we're putting one of our sons on my shoulders and walking around the green uh, so that he would see this. And but at that time it was still daylight. It was it was pretty. The atmosphere was pretty friendly. Nobody expected this to wind up with what was it four hundred arrests or whatever it was right. the end of the evening. Right. But then, uh, when it, after dark, um, and the, the, the veterans were wanted to bivouac on the green, and the uh, selectmen basically said, no, you're not, and, and the police were there to enforce that, the state troopers, that's where you had this sense of crisis of, of you know, what Molly just described. And so when we went out the second time to walk in around dark. in the dark, there was a very different atmosphere from from the, the first time. And um, and that was followed then by these large number of arrests. In fact, the next day, Molly went to Concord to drive people home who'd been arrested. And the arrest took place in the middle of the night, yeah. around 3 in the morning. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They were initially processed at the Department of Public Works up on Bedford Street. Right. And then they had their hearing that morning right. at the district court in Concord. Right. So you helped. I helped facilitate sh bringing shuttle folks. them back. I hadn't shuttle wanted to be. Uh, they went up to bite to I didn't want to be arrested. You went to Concord together. Went to Concord together. Yeah. Which is now, it's the old town hall. The court was in the old town hall. That's yeah. yeah. But to give you to give you a little background uh, on the green and why the selectmen may have felt protective about the green, in addition to the bitterness about the Vietnam War and all the rest of that, our our boys used to run out on the green and play frisbee and so forth. They were running around on the green. And in those days, there was a view that the green was, uh, you know, not to be used for any recreation. So our kids were out playing on the green, and uh, uh, Lexington police stopped his car. With a, with and said, a bullhorn. With a bullhorn. It says, you boys cannot run on the green. <laughs> Um, so they came over to the 
policeman said, why not? We live right there. And he said, no, no. He said, this, this green has only two purposes. It's patriotic remembrances, and you can graze your cattle here. And the kids came back to the house afterward and say, can we get a cow? <laughs> well, they had already just bought a cow. They'd gone <laughs> in New York in, State. In New York State, we, they'd gone to the cattle auction, and they bought a cow. And um, Ben had a girlfriend, or I guess John had a girlfriend named in Hancock School, in named Michelle, yeah. and named the cow Michelle. And they wanted they, to bring Michelle back and graze, graze her, her on, on the, the green. green. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the select the, the attitude toward the green at, at, at the, in those days was. You know, it was it's much more. Ground. This is uh, you know sacred, sacred ground, right. and so that uh, partly explains how the selectmen, when when the Vietnam veterans wanted to bivouac on the green, uh, why they would have had it. It was partly Vietnam, but it was partly this feeling you you don't uh, do things territory. on the green. Well, it's always been a concern of precedent setting with respect to uses and activities, uh, political events such as what happened in the afternoon and yeah. into the evening, which was a statement of political position, Vietnam War yeah. being the topic. Uh, but the physical use of it as a campsite was very difficult for the selectmen to right. appreciate or tolerate right. because who would be the next group that decides to have a Boy Scout jamboree or goodness knows yeah. what else might take place. Yeah. So it was a very difficult time for certain. It, which you folks witnessed, mm -hmm. yeah. and it was quite representing quite a sea change of the viewpoint of a lot of Lexingtonians with respect to right. the political right. winds that were blowing all over Cambridge as well as Lexington. So. Well, I, 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 is, you reminded me, Peter, by showing me the headline in the, in the Lexington right. Minuteman, the idea that there were 400 people uh, who were arrested that night. That's a large 410. number. 410. 410, This yeah. is from the Minuteman of the fo yeah. following Thursday, June 3rd. Yeah. And uh, for all those that might be interested in researching the actual facts as they would uh, report it in the Minuteman, yeah. this is available. But, uh, okay. yeah, I think the consequences of that evening probably had uh, long ramifications yep. over the course of uh, subsequent years in town. Mm -hmm. Right. Politically. Yeah. The new archives at the Historical Society will be a great, a great yeah. resource for for Lexington. Some of that information, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. right? So, your children graduated from Lexington High School, and one did. One the other did. two went away. So school. the others yeah. are still trying to. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite a rigorous <laughs> curriculum. <laughs> we assumed that they would both that they would uh, all graduate from high school from Lexington. High so it was school, your youngest that graduated yeah. from the yeah. from the school. Yeah. What year was, would that have been? Well, Dan must have been. He was born in he '66. Graduated from college in in uh, '88. So. 88? 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. 84. And seeing them all go off on their own after college, you spent at least as many, if not more, years staying at 1932 Massachusetts Avenue because that's home. All right, there <laughs> yeah, you go. Exactly. Well, Molly, had comfort, you can yeah. answer. The, you can answer the same yeah. way. No, there's a comfort right. level that one yeah. gets so as true. you settle well, into a community like this. Uh, but I've got to tell you a funny story about that, Peter, because first time when. Uh, when we moved in, the, the, the house was once a, a farmhouse, and the back house, as you know, has a chicken shed that's built into the, right. to the barn. And so when the boys were small, we said, let's get chickens. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so that they understand animals and so forth. So uh, we went down to, Molly went down to Wilson's Farms, and and uh, who did you talk to? Was, I uh, talked to Don Wilson. To Don Wilson. I said, could you sell me some chickens on the hoof? And he said, sure. You know. And he said, and will you take these two rabbits too? And I said, 
<laughs> so, so we wound up you. with chickens and rabbits in the back of the house in this in well, the shed. trend too because yeah. the, the foreman's got chickens. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. it. So, yeah. well, so we now it's I mean now it's a so we uh, uh, then we went to Washington and, and I think we, we gave the chickens to the foremans. We used to say, you know, why does the chicken cross the road in Lexington to go to the Nyes to the Fort? That's right. Yeah. But well, anyway. They, well, the Nyes had the Hancock Cluck House, right? That's right. <laughs> Hen Hancock. Hancock. Hancock <laughs> Cluck House. Yeah. Hancock. Right. Made by Joe Wirtz, Margin's right. husband. Right. But the, but the funny road. part of this story is that when we uh, went away to Washington the second time and came back, um, I said, Molly, Maybe we should get chickens again. We had again. no children. And we had no children, Might but at well that point chickens. I realized the chickens were really for us and not just for the kids. <laughs> we still have chickens, and, this, yeah. and our chickens are oh, still living in the house. Yeah. Yeah. So you've been, you know, the front row seat right there for all of the Patriots Day celebrations, the happy times, too. Yeah. And, and it was, yeah, and when we could... 71. Well, you know, right Joe now. was working with all these international visitors to Harvard, and uh, they were at the Center for International Affairs. Were you in town uh, in 75 when Joe Ford came? Yes, oh, yeah. we were. Yeah. But we would have have the foreigners all come for breakfast to see the battle. Oh, on the night. Oh, nice. And, the reenactment. Um, yeah. The reenactment. Um, and that was a, that was a wonderful... Um, Living history, thing, uh, yeah, thing that we could share with with people f who came yeah. from far. And then, and then uh, we usually have a buffet in the backyard, uh, and people could then stay okay. and watch the big parade. I mean, you get the yeah. you'd get the oh, high yeah. school, right. the high school parade where or the ki morning, kid parade. morning parade, where I remember watching our son marching along and he wasn't he was out of step, but <laughs> <laughs> but then then you then we have people over for you know, a picnic in the backyard, and then you could sit on the front porch and watch the, the big parade. So it was, it was great fun. So in 75, when Gerald Ford came, what did the Secret Service do to your place? Or you They know, came they in and looked at all the windows and made sure that all our upstairs windows were locked. Yeah. Um, did they tell you to stay off the roof? Or? Yeah, no, we didn't. We, we, we didn't. Later, the kids would sit on the roof, but not, not that year. Yeah. yeah. Too young for that. Yeah, right. So well, I remember looking over from the Battle of Green and trying to figure out how many kids can exactly you fit on that roof? Is <laughs> <laughs> that falling, porch going to fall? But I'm falling into the bushes. <laughs> <laughs> but it was great. It's a great, a great ringside seat. My yeah. only complaint was that then, I watched that battle year after year after year, and we always lost. It was like was it was like the old Red Sox. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it seemed over the years so it kept getting a little more exciting and a little more and active. Yeah. Left, you know. yeah. And then they rerouted the parade. It used to oh, be right. the parade came right past us, and then they rerouted the parade around on the far side of the green. That was disappointing. Oh right, because they take a the shop island. left at Harrington yeah. by Joanne's house. Right? Yeah. I think that's why. Yeah. Yeah. The island <laughs> was put in there. The oh, yeah. No, the island's always uh, in there. Island. That's yeah. called the Dolls Common. Oh, that wasn't always there. Wait, well, well the right. island, oh, the it's island by the library. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, no, that's, no, that's, that's, that's the right. Dolls Common is, is what's in front of our house. Triangle. It's a little oh, triangle. Nice. triangle. Oh, nice, yeah. And um, that was Rolly Greeley who filled us in on, it was called the Dolls Common. Wow. Isn't that funny? Mm -hmm. But it's but it's a ringside that. seat. 1932 Mass Ave was a terrific place to live. A wonderful place to yeah. raise our children. Yeah. As was Lexington overall. There were no yeah. foxes in the woods or turtles in the water. <laughs> <laughs> no, Lexington. Our, you mean Lexington was great, and, the, and uh, you know, walking to Hancock School and walking to Muzzy and being able to play on the teams and so forth. It was it was a uh, it was great, and then, ironically, now both Hancock and walking to Hayden, but uh, you know both Hancock oh, and Muzzy, so cool. which were our kids' schools, are now no longer schools. They're, They're both apartments, co condominiums. Right. Yeah. yeah, you you could walk everywhere, but yeah. yet you had a, a lovely property yeah. was, there you know, in the middle of everything. Yeah. Well, yes, and also when we when we bought the house, Joe said, "Well, yeah, we could." He had a five-year appointment or something. I yeah. think at Harvard. And so he said, well, we have to buy a house with a view, and that meant a hill and 10 acres. And I thought, where are we going to be? How can we possibly afford a 
hill and 10 acres. And then we found a house with a view. Well, I grew up on a farm and I always wanted, you know, Open space for spa space. farming and, and growing animals and vegetables and so forth. And, uh, but you know, 1932 was an old farmhouse. And as I said, we could have chickens in the backyard and had quite a vegetable garden back there too. And you got it to work for your family because yeah. you took the barn from the backyard. That's right. That's exactly and tell right. us how what what process made you decide that that's the best thing to do rather than find a bigger or that larger house somewhere in town for the three boys. Yeah. Only Peter would ask that question. Well, not really. It's interesting that. <laughs> but in there was days, the barn. There, there was the barn, and it was set back. And we were shoveling the driveway. That's, oh, yeah, that's yeah, how by, that's, hand. <laughs> by hand. That's the way we did it. And this is so before snow blows. We thought yeah. it would be great to have more space in the house, more garden in the back. And by moving the barn up and attaching it to the house, we got a, a bigger so, house and a, and a bigger yeah. garden. Right. Yeah, Sunny Osgood uh, right. Right. did that. Right. Yeah. And you didn't have to shovel quite as far. And we in didn't the have winter. to shovel as far. And you got so good at moving bonds, I think you moved one up in Sandwich, New Hampshire, <laughs> too, right? But, the, but when we had, after we moved it, we had a lot of spare boards, old boards. And I, would, I took them, and we also had not more space in the backyard. And I took the boards, and then I, we got plastic, and we flooded it. Yeah. So we had a skating oh, ring in the backyard, yeah, right. which was great, because the boys could go out and play hockey, you know, these little kids, until it would, uh, until you got a thaw, oh, and somebody's sure. skate would go through the ice, which was now rotten, and was puncture the plastic. Oh, and then it was all <laughs> Water wasn't quite as expensive. That was, yeah. so good. Yeah. And also, that was before the days when you could buy a, a backyard right. hockey rink. Now, now everybody <laughs> has a backyard hockey rink. When you folks first pretty... moved in in the mid '60s, at the corner of Massachusetts Avenue and Worthen Road, where now is basketball courts, mm -hmm. was there a little pond there? At that time, there was when was I was it, growing was up in the '50s called the Dew Drop. It was called the Dew Drop Pond, oh. and it was a pond. Uh, 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 swimming pools were there, but this little pond, and there was a, a pole that they put the town put a light on, so you could skate there. Oh. And I don't, I remember doing that in the fifties. And, and yeah, and when no, I was that was out, gone by the time. It was gone by then. Yeah. Okay, because yeah. Worthen Road went through from Massachusetts Avenue to Waltham Street. I right. think it's around the time you came to town, right. sixty four. Initially, it didn't have a traffic light at the intersection. Yeah. I don't yeah. know right. if you remember yep. it being non. -lit. And the house on the corner, opposite opposite the Dana home. Oh mm -hmm. yeah was all covered in vines and dark. Do right. you remember that? Yeah, and it was covered in red asphalt. And no one went there on Halloween. Seen it. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> and then a decorator came along and uncovered, took off the yeah. red asbestos shingle, right. took away the overgrowth, and discovered Rufus uh, Porter, yeah. Rufus wow. Porter uh, oh, murals on inside. Yes. And, and it's a lovely house. Yeah. It's a lovely house. Wow. And the Dana home, uh, of course, is now at the inn, which is right. a spectacular addition. Right. Yeah. yeah. But that was that was a little bit run down in the before it became the inn. No. Well, it did. I didn't think. So. I thought the inn is basically spruced it up. Well, oh, so. definitely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I guess so. But you know, the but Dana a, home. The Dana home served a real purpose. A real purpose. Oh, oh yeah, no, it was the old yeah. lady's home, yeah. and then it went co-ed, and then. Uh, it became the Dana home, I think. Right, up until uh, we had family members there when it closed. Yeah. And that was not that many years ago, 10, 15 yeah. years ago. And now they still have their foundation, so. Yes, yeah. yes, the Dana Home right. Foundation has been right. very, yeah. very generous, effective around right. town, doing yeah. a lot of generous things I for know. the benefit of seniors right. and That's the community right. at large. Yeah. Yeah. No, but we, terrific. but as long as we're visiting that part of the neighborhood, we should say more about Hayden. I mean, Hayden is really just such a blessing for the town. I mean, and our kids used to play uh, hockey growing up, ice hockey. And, you know, instead of having to get in the car and drive. I didn't you know, allow for, for a long I time, said we do not do <laughs> traveling could, teams. You, you could not. walk them down to right. Hayden. And, and, okay, and, so the rink was open and your boys themselves. were young. Yeah. yeah. Right. And they're, 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 great. We benefit a lot from Hayden. Yeah. And the tennis 
Yeah. Played a lot. All the facilities. Yeah. yeah. Incredible. So you've kind of moved on to a new phase. Yes. You think? Where we are now. You're kind of <laughs> easing away from 1922 math. 1932. Yeah. 32. Yeah. People, people say, oh, 1932, they think that's the year it was built. And it was <laughs> built in the 1830s, 1830s yeah. right? Yeah. So. yeah. And then they would also start taking pictures of the church across the street, and they get up close, and they, oh, they back up, and they back up, and they back up, and then they end up on our front step, getting the best <laughs> view get of the picture of the church. first parish. Yeah. But we we finally uh, moved to uh, Brookhaven um, at ten ten Waltham Street, so we're just a couple of miles down the road, so to speak. Same zip. And uh, there's a you know is a continuing care community. It's uh, like an extra insurance policy is as you age, which uh, alas we all do. So uh, uh, we're this year I guess we'll send sell 1932 sadly. So you get you still get to experience Lexington and oh, yeah. a lot of your volunteerism. And oh, yeah. you've made all kinds of new friends at Brookhaven. Mm -hmm. Well and they're, they're all there. All, all, all our friends are there. A lot of Lexington <laughs> um, And they all said, What took you so long? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. been very welcoming. It's been a lovely experience. Well and since Molly's still very active in Lexart and uh, Lexart is on Waltham Street, and so is Brookhaven. Two miles, I know. It's, <laughs> it's two miles up the street. Uh, well, you'll have to have some some form of a celebration for the last Patriots Day come yes, April yeah, this year, right. and bring some folks over yeah. to yes. celebrate. Uh, hopefully, we'll have the reenactment back yeah. in place um, in 2022. Yeah, yeah. yeah you think they will? For two I years, 20 and 21. Well, we yeah. can't we can't sell the house until we have a final Patriots Day. I agree completely. <laughs> a blast. <I> yeah. <laughs> Are there any other recollections of your time in Lexington that you'd like to share with us that really come to mind? Well, it's just been a very congenial and friendly town. I mean, it, some of the stories that we are, we're still learning about what our kids did are things that we don't <laughs> want to that share. That takes years to come out. <laughs> <laughs> Those the, stories the go time on that, and on. The time our, one of the kids who visited Replace parked his Volkswagen bus or camper thing there, and the, the boys went out and they tied a rope to his back bumper to a tree that was in front of our house. When this kid, this kid always used to screech his brakes and go out fast. He got into his van. He, he, jam, he stepped on the gas and left his bumper behind. That's the kind of that's the kind of that's the kind of thing that Molly says. You know. I hope the statute of limitations has gone by on that one. <laughs> I don't think we include that. <laughs> no, we do. Oh, mischief there are Lots of stories. Peter has stories. His they're my stories, and I'm keeping them that way. <laughs> Well, this was very yeah. this was very Thank entertaining. You. It was yeah. nice to have the Thank perspective you. of fifty six years. Fifty six. Yeah, fifty six yeah. years. Yeah. They and just flew by, right? right? Yeah, yeah. 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 it adds up. Yeah, it does. So. Well, thank you both very much. Well, we really right. appreciate well, thank it. Thank you, and yeah. enjoy many more long years and stay in the community and come by the well, hood every now and right. again. Well, we'll, we'll still we'll still Lexington. We'll be seeing you around. Yep. Right. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank, well, you. thank you. And thank it's you all to our viewers for watching us today. And you'll eventually be able to check this out on YouTube along with the other 50 plus interviews. So you're amongst great company. So. Well, isn't yeah. that Good. interesting? Thank you for yeah. thinking of us. And, yeah. You're forever part of the town. Yep, yeah. that's for thank sure. You. And that's important. <laughs>